Welcome to Back to Health, your source for the latest in health, wellness, and medical care, keeping you informed so you can make informed health care choices for yourself and your whole family. Back to Health features conversations about trending health topics and medical breakthroughs from our team of world-renowned physicians at Weill Cornell Medicine. I'm Melanie Cole, and joining me today is Dr. Michael Stewart. He's a professor and chairman in the Department of Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery at Weill Medical College of Cornell University and Otolaryngologist-in-Chief at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell Medical Center, and he's here to tell us about Ramsey-Hunt Syndrome. Dr. Stewart, it's a pleasure to have you join us today. Can you tell us a little bit about Ramsey-Hunt Syndrome? What is it? And discuss this condition as it's recently been in the news with Justin Bieber's recent diagnosis. Yes, I'll be happy to. Thank you for having me. I'd like to tell a little bit of history about Ramsey-Hunt, which is interesting. Most medical syndromes, for example, Bell's palsy, which is facial paralysis, is named after Sir Charles Bell. This Ramsey Hunt syndrome is named after Dr. Ramsey Hunt. That was his name, his whole name. So it's a little unusual that both his first and last name were in the syndrome. It's also interesting that he discovered and reported this syndrome when he was a neurology professor at Cornell University's Medical College, back before it was named Wild Cornell. He moved from Cornell's Medical College to Columbia's Medical College in New York City a few years later. So uh, I'm sitting here at Cornell's Medical College now and reporting on what Dr. Ramsey Hunt did more than 100 years ago. So Ramsey Hunt syndrome is a special type of shingles. Shingles is familiar to many people. It's a reactivation of the chickenpox virus called herpes zoster or varicella zoster that lives dormant in a nerve until it is reactivated by something later in life and causes a painful nerve pain and rash with vesicles and little pustules that spread over the distribution of that nerve. Ramsey Hunt affects the ear, the area right around the ear, and it affects the facial nerve, causing facial paralysis or severe facial weakness. The classic findings of Ramsey Hunt syndrome are vesicles and rash, severe ear pain, and facial nerve paralysis. So it's a subtype of shingles caused by exactly the same virus. Yikes. Shingles is scary enough. So tell us a little bit about who is at risk. And you can speak as well about some of the way it presents itself. Yes. So many people are at risk because if you ever had chicken pox, you have the virus in you throughout your life. Even if you got a certain type of chickenpox vaccine, which was the killed virus, still in some patients you're at risk. Now, we do have vaccines for chickenpox and for shingles, which can reduce the frequency of this. Now, which are relatively recent. Who gets it? Anyone can get it. It's more common in the patients over age 60. It's more common in patients who have an immune compromised condition or who have another illness, something that sets off or weakens the immune system or causes stress to the body, which causes this virus to reactivate. However, it has been reported in young, healthy people frequently as well. The typical presentation is significant ear pain followed by development of rash and blisters in the ear itself, what's called the oracle, the external ear, or in the skin surrounding the ear, followed by facial weakness or facial paralysis. Dr. Stewart, does this come on fast or is it slow to develop? Because it sounds to me by what you've described that it's some of those symptoms look similar to a stroke. And so yes. facial paralysis and such, and that would warrant a BFAST and 911 call. Tell us a little bit about how this develops. It, does it come on really fast or is it a little bit slower? It's a little bit slower. Typically, you typically get one or two symptoms and then the others follow in a progression over a matter of, say, one to three days. So it doesn't all happen, boom, all at once. Many people who have this, just like people who have Bell's palsy, one of their first thoughts is, was this a stroke? And that's not an unreasonable concern, but there's often a progression of symptoms. Other symptoms that can occur are hearing loss because the facial nerve that moves the facial muscles also is right next to the hearing nerve and the balance nerve. So patients can also get hearing loss, they can get vertigo, and the facial nerve also carries nerves that protect the ear from loud sound. So patients who have this will oftentimes suddenly find that loud sounds are extremely bothersome in that affected ear. It also carries nerve fibers that supply the tear glands so people get a dry eye and also part of the taste of the tongue 
So patients can notice a change in their taste or a funny taste in the mouth. So if you develop over a period of one to two days, vesicles, pain, change in your hearing, dry eye, and then you develop a facial paralysis. That's not a stroke, almost definitely. That's this nerve inflammation, this shingles reactivation happening over the initial course. So then how is it diagnosed? What tests do you do to determine that this is what's going on? It is a fairly classical clinical picture. You can do an MRI scan, which will demonstrate enhancement in the nerve, but that's actually not necessary for the diagnosis. With a classic presentation, the vesicles, the facial weakness or total paralysis, etc., the diagnosis is often made clinically. It's relatively rare, Ramsey Hunt. For example, Bell's palsy, which is just pure facial paralysis, which is not caused by any known cause, and then typically responds very well on its own over days to weeks and recovers, that's a more common condition. If you're at a cocktail party, you're more likely to meet someone who has had Bell's palsy once in their life or someone in their family has. Ramsey Hunt is more rare. It's not something that you'll typically meet or know someone who's had it, but it's not vanishingly rare. You know, we do see it in our practice, certainly. Does the shingles vaccine, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, can you expand on that? Does that provide, I mean, I just got two of them last year as my mother lost the vision in her eye from shingles. And so did an uncle on the other side of the family. So both sides of my family had that in their head and around that area. Does that vaccine offer some protection, even though this is relatively rare, as you said? It absolutely does. Now, vaccines are not perfect. It is possible for a person who has been vaccinated, depending on your body's response to the vaccine, it's theoretically possible you could still develop shingles. But the vaccine dramatically reduces the frequency of shingles compared to unvaccinated patients. And because this is a subtype of shingles, yes, if you've been vaccinated with the Shingrix or there's another vaccine that's available as well, if you've been vaccinated, you're much less likely to have Ramsey Hunt. So then speak about what's available to treat it. Does it permanently damage the nerves? Are there treatments? What do you do for it? Yes. So it is important to treat this, and we typically treat this with an antiviral medication that's designed to be treated for the herpes virus, which would be either valcyclovir or acyclovir. Usually valcyclovir or valtrex is what's preferred. We also typically get steroids because inflammation is part of the problem. And it's actually important to treat with antivirals and steroids for several days. First of all, it helps the acute symptoms resolve quicker, but it also very likely prevents the development of what's called post-herpetic neuralgia, which is persistent nerve pain after shingles, which is shingles are bad enough. If you get persistent nerve pain in that area after shingles, it's even worse. So treatment with antivirals and steroids helps the initial symptoms, and it also reduces the risk of post-herpetic neuralgia. So treatment is important. Also, we give pain medication many times, some sort of analgesic, because in fact, the pain associated with uh, Ramsey Hunt ear pain can be quite uh, significant and bothersome. Are there any long-term complications if it is not treated quickly with antiviral and steroids, as you mentioned? Well, yes, potentially a higher risk of the post-herpetic neuralgia that I mentioned. But also, I should point out that Ramsey Hunt does have a generally poorer prognosis of total recovery of facial nerve function than like Bell's palsy, even if you do almost nothing, has a greater than 90% chance of returning to normal. It's a rare patient who doesn't have a full recovery. With Ramsey Hunt, it's about a 70% chance of recovery to complete normal. So there's more patients with Ramsey Hunt who do not fully recover their facial nerve function or they have what's called a synkinesis or mass motion, which is where different parts of the face move together when they're not supposed to. So the eye blinks at the same time as your mouth smiles, for example. That's an outcome that can happen after a Ramsey Hunt, which is more common than it is in other types of facial paralysis. Also, the hearing loss, if it occurs, and hearing loss only occurs in about half of patients but if it occurs, it can often recover just like other viral infections causing hearing loss can recover, but it may not. So some people develop a permanent hearing loss after Ramsey Hunt as well. 
Well, I can attest that post-herpetic neuralgia can be quite painful and disabling in so many ways. I'd like you to wrap it up, Dr. Stewart, with your best advice, whether we can prevent this, about how rare it is, maybe the importance of keeping up with our well visits and good lifestyle behaviors and vaccines for sure. Give us a summary of what you tell people when they're asking you about this now, as it's been in the news. Yes, so this is caused by the virus that causes chickenpox. So getting vaccinated against chickenpox as a young person is very helpful. Following the appropriate guidelines for vaccination against shingles is also important, and those are based on age and underlying medical conditions. So I strongly recommend people get the shingles vaccine, not just for Ramsey Hunt, but for shingles in general. That's the other piece of advice. The third piece of advice is if you develop ear pain, sudden hearing loss, or weakness of the face, facial weakness or paralysis, definitely seek medical attention because, in fact, starting early treatment may. This hasn't really been proven definitively, but it's definitely believed that the early treatment improves your outcome and almost definitely reduces the chance of having a long-term problem like a post-herpetic neuralgia. Wow, so interesting. And doctor, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about this, which is so similar to shingles, but people don't really know what it is. So what a great education you've given us today. Such an informative podcast. Thank you again. And while Cornell Medicine continues to see our patients in person, as well as through video visits, and you can be confident of the safety of your appointments at Wild Cornell Medicine. That concludes today's episode of Back to Health. We'd like to invite our audience to download, subscribe, rate, and review Back to Health on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. And for more health tips, go to wildcornell.org and search podcasts. And parents, don't forget to check out our Kids Healthcast. So many informative podcasts there. I'm Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for joining us today. Every parent wants what's best for their children. But in the age of the Internet, it can be difficult to navigate what is actually fact-based or pure speculation. Cut through the noise with Kids HealthCast, featuring Wild Cornell Medicine's expert physicians and researchers, discussing a wide range of health topics, providing information on the latest medical science. Finally, a podcast to help you make informed choices for your family's health and wellness. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, don't forget to rate us five stars. All information contained in this podcast is intended for informational and educational purposes. The information is not intended nor suited to be a replacement or substitute for professional medical treatment or for professional medical advice relative to a specific medical question or condition. We urge you to always seek the advice of your physician or medical professional with respect to your medical condition or questions. While Cornell Medicine makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast, and any reliance on such information is done at your own risk. Participants may have consulting, equity, board membership, or other relationships with pharmaceutical, biotech, or device companies unrelated to their role in this podcast. No payments have been made by any company to endorse any treatments, devices, or procedures. And while Cornell Medicine does not endorse, approve, or recommend any product, service, or entity mentioned in this podcast, opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the speaker and do not represent the perspectives of Wild Cornell Medicine as an institution.